Welcome to the Reclamation Link Building for Brands and Enterprises webinar from Inceive Interactive. I'll be your host. My name is Sam Wheeler, and we're going to walk through some pretty cool reclamation tactics and uh, um, how you can kind of set your campaign up. Really excited. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, or if you want more specific strategy for your specific brand, we can put that together for you, no problem. The goal here is just to show companies how they can set up a team in-house. So information flow, first thing we're gonna talk about is why do we even care about links? Second thing is we're gonna go through the different tactics, unlinked brand mentions, broken links, link sculpting, and link jacking. And then we're gonna talk about pitches and a follow-up cadence. Why do I give a shit about links? Very important here. Um, people, a lot of people don't really understand the power of it, what makes a good link, what makes a bad link. So we're gonna quickly go through that. Um, search engines use links for two main purposes, to find new web pages and to help determine how a page should rank. All right, there's like a bunch of patents that Google has around like seed pages and how far away you are from a seed page. Um, and that those are all factors that go into um, what ranking you have, right? It's just one of the several factors. Um, some estimates, when there's a graphic here that we'll show in a second, estimate that links make up 40% of like a weighted metric, right? And back in the day, links were votes. Whoever had the most votes wins, but nowadays it's whoever has the best votes. So here you can see a graph where the domain level features and the link, um, the specific page level link features are almost like 40% of like the metrics that may take up um, the ranking metrics. Not all links are created equal. We'll get into that a little bit more. Um, this is just another kind of like graph to show that links are popular. If you have really bad content and your website sucks, links are gonna not help you as much. Um, but once you finish all your on-page efforts and your page looks good, the only other lever you can pull is like internal links from your website, but then also external links pointing to your site. So it's usually the kind of ongoing strategy that you use once your page is set up properly. All right, so the different types of links, there's like several link factors to consider when trying to identify like what a good link is. Okay, so we wanna, you wanna look at uh, the referring domain level. Okay, is the domain strong? Is it is it a respectable site? Is it old? Is it, you know, have good information? Um, does it have rankings, right? If you get a link from a site that has no rankings, it doesn't help you. Um, and then how relevant is the site, right? Uh, if I am a website about farming, um, Sam's video game website is not a good link to get if I'm a farming website. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward there. From a referring page, um, this is the page where your, the link actually lives on the domain. We want to look at a bunch of things. We want to look at relevancy and authority of that specific page and that specific article. The New York Times is a news site, right? But it has pages on different things, right? So like a farming website or a farming article on the New York Times that links to my farming website is going to be great. Um, you want to look at the location on the page, right? You really want in body um, in the body of the piece. Um, you don't want any footer links or, or sidebar links or side rail links. You want to make sure it's like um, in the body of the article and it's adding value uh, to the users, right? And you also kind of want to look at the number of outgoing links as well, because if you're, if the page has 5,000 links on it and you're just one of 5,000, then like it's not really adding value. So, you know, those big giant link lists of, of hundreds and hundreds of links, don't go for those. They're not really adding value. Google knows that that's an old um, link building tactic. And then the specific link itself, you want to look at the anchor text and the destination page, right? Obviously the goal here is to build links to important SEO pages. That's what we're going to talk about. Just to give you an example of like referring page relevancy, Cricket Bat giving a link to a flower page doesn't make any sense. Cricket Bat page should probably give a link to another Cricket related items page. Pretty straightforward. All right, so we're gonna talk about link reclamation, okay? This is kind of a broad term for basically anything that has to do with your current website or your brand. Um, and that's why I broke them up into different tactics because like technically, well, we'll talk about the tactics in a second, but what you need to do is you need to find assets and opportunities to reach out to people and ask for links. And you also need to pick target pages for your new links, okay? So, you know, if I'm um, Apple, 
right? I don't need any links to my homepage. So when I'm doing a reclamation campaign, I'm going to look for, um, I'm going to probably pick links to my laptops page or my air, my headphones pages, right? And, and try and find opportunities that um, I can build links to those specific pages because those are the ones that I'm probably wanting, wanting to grow um, in my SEO channel. You also want to look for patterns. We'll talk about patterns a little bit more, but um, you having one opportunity is great, but you want to find a, a, an area where you can scale those efforts um, and build links, you know, build 20, 30 links to a specific page. So, it can, you know, you can actually kind of the lever that you pull has impact in the long run. And then once you identify some opportunities, you want to pull 30 to 40 prospects um, to test viability. Um, and you want to keep all your prospects on one sheet, which we'll go over. Um, and then you pitch and repeat. You pitch, you follow up, and you repeat the process. So, you know, if, let's say I want to build links to the, the headphones page and identify a bunch of opportunities, and those opportunities don't work. Then I got to rethink my strategy because I don't want to. I don't want to spend 50 hours prospecting for something that's just not going to work, right? So it's a classic testing framework there. Cool. So moving along, the first tactic we're going to talk about is unlinked brand mentions. Okay, this is a really simple tactic. Somebody on the web is writing about your brand or mentioning it, but they're not linking to it. Okay, um, but it gets to a little bit more complicated than that because there's different types of unlinked brand mentions. Mentions in your brand. Duh, that's really easy, right? You know, Apple is says this or, you know, Home Depot says this or whatever. Those are really easy to find. Um, but there's more on like brand mentions, images, which technically is its like own style of like image reclamation. But if it's your brand and somebody's using your image, that's technically a brand mention, right? They're using your asset, brand asset. Uh, mentions of your team or somebody working at it. If you've got somebody who like is on the lecture circuit and goes around and does conferences and stuff like that, that person, while not your brand, it's working for your company is technically an on like brand mention. Um, partnerships or other company brands, right? If, if I've got, uh, you know, I know there's like uh, Men's Warehouse, for example, has a bunch of brands that they own, right? So anybody mentioning one of the other brands that Men's Warehouse owns could also link to Men's Warehouse, right? So that's uh, unlinked brand mentioned by association or ownership, right? Or, or also any partnerships, right? I know a lot of golf companies, they partner with uh, country clubs and golf courses to do events and stuff like that. And even if they don't, specifically mentioned Callaway on an event, you know that you're partners, so you can reach out to them and say, hey, give us a link. So you wanna to use tools um, and organize the type of mention in your prospect sheets. Um, Moz and Google's event search operators are the best ones by far. I'm gonna show you how to use those in a second. Um, Flickr is an amazing tool for images, all right? There's a ton of like WordPress plugins that uh, um, use Flickr to find images. So we'll go over that. I don't know if we'll have time to go over that, but but basically you upload your images into Flickr and then people start linking to those images over time and you just reach out to them and say, hey, change it from Flickr to, to our website. Um, so yeah, here's an example here um, of in URL edu, quote, sur la table. And this is a pretty cool example of there are a lot of colleges talking about, you know, this company's um, person or people involved or their, their marketing campaigns or whatever, right? So search operators are really easy to find on link brand mentions. I'm going to show an example here. Let's do that same example here in URL, edu plus sur la tab. And these, these aren't our clients. This isn't one of our clients. Um, so I thought it'd be a good use because there's a ton of mentions out there. 91,000 results, probably not that many. Um, but we look at this one here, UConn today. All right, it's back from 2013. Um, it looks like this guy, Joel, was probably a chef or, you know, helped design cookware or something for Sir Latab. And we see here that he's a chef. Great. We don't see a link. This is a Vimeo link. That's an outgoing link, which is good. It's got his website, right? Which is great because we see here that he is 
high-end cookware retailer, Sur La Table. Um, I like saying Sur La Table, but I know it's not that. Anyways, what I'm seeing here is high-end cookware retailer. Okay, so does this company need more homepage links? Maybe, but it's a great opportunity for their cookware page, right? So if we look for cookware, see a bunch of competitors, William Sonoma, Macy's right here. So this is a category page. This is the type of page we want links on, right? So what I can do then is I can look for any mentions that has company name plus cookware. I can hit up these sites and be like, hey, can you link to us? And not even tell them why they're linking to us, or not even tell them like why we chose that page. Just be like, here's a page you could use to link to us, um, which we'll get into that pitch just a little bit later, but this is a really great example. Um, Here's one from SI, which is the Smithsonian, I think. Yeah, Smithsonian. Kitchen has equipment and tools, right? Love that. So maybe in this one, I'm going to use, pitch them the... Um, cooking tools or cooking utensils page or something like that. Uh, but getting a link on the Smithsonian would be epic. So a really cool opportunity there. And this is like a mixture of like partnerships too that they had with um, the Smithsonian, right? So there might be somebody else who already owns this relationship and you don't have to hit them up from just like a cold outreach standpoint. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Pretty easy. Um, you want to, I guess, you know, we could start building a prospect list. Um, from this, so we can start here with the Yukon Today one. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up Excel. It's pretty easy, straightforward. You wanna get all of the information at once, right? So you're gonna have your URL, uh, the domain, and then DA usually, whatever you're looking for. Um, so we have Yukon Today. Guessing this DA is high. I don't have my Moz bar logged in right now, I don't think. So I'm going to do that really quickly. So while that's loading, I need to look for somebody to email. Okay. This is really important because, especially when it's a big organization, I'm not going to email the dean of students, right? He or she doesn't care. Um, you have to find somebody who's high enough on the totem pole that can make decisions for you and low enough on the totem pole that cares, right? Um, you know, or the dean of students doesn't care about updating some article from 2013 on their student newspaper. Uh, but somebody might, somebody in the newspaper office, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look for... Um, there's got to be like a masthead or something. News at me. So DA seventy nine, love that. Um, then I need email and name of the person we're going to hit up, um, and then I also need the new URL, and then notes and date emailed. Okay, turn that into a table, and I'm going to label this ULBM because it's on like brand mentions. Uh, um, there might be something down here. What does that say? Contact. There we go. So, spokespeople, Michael Enright, not going to email him. Probably not even going to email um, Kristen Cole. 
maybe not. I mean, this is the this is the head of UConn today, right? Elizabeth Omara on two new. I don't honestly don't know. I guess maybe if there's nobody else here. It doesn't look like there's a ton of. I guess there is a lot of writers here, but what I'll probably want to do is email like a webmaster. Um, multimedia services, maybe. Hmm. I guess we'll put we'll put this person in for now. Um, but like this person may not care, right? So drop the email in. Her name is Elizabeth. So the new URL we're gonna use um, was the cookware page, I believe. So that would be this one. Wonderful. So we're gonna do that, and I'm probably gonna change my uh, um, search from in URL this maybe plus the term cookware. Now this is just giving me edu results, right? Yeah, here's UCSD, another um, Smithsonian, um, which is interesting because what you could do here is you could, um, once you get build a relationship, right, you could do a search of the site and be like, oh, by the way, I also noticed there's an opportunity here, blah, 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 blah. So this is an old one, 2004, still going to hit them up. It's still live. It's an old article. You never know. Cool. So we got to move along here. But uh, that is on the brand mentions. Next one. Broken links. So broken links, I like to use Ahrefs. It's a really great tool. Um, shout out to Ahrefs. Um, you want to find people that are already linking to your website that are broken. All right, Majestic as a tool, Search Console will tell you when your site does have broken links, right? It will say if like something like pages are broken, and you can use that to kind of search Ahrefs to see if any of those actually have links. Ahrefs and Majestic are the, are the best, I think. There's a bunch of other free tools out there that you could use. Um, and you want to look for just straight up broken links. Those are easy, right? It's really clear from the tool which link is active and which link is broken. But what I want to talk about more, which people often forget, is soft 404s. This gets into a little bit of link sculpting, um, but there are pages that either are out of stock or that don't, 301s that like don't make sense, right? Google has said that if the 301 doesn't make sense or the canonical tag doesn't make sense, they're not gonna count the link. So you wanna look for kind of patterns there, which I'll show you in a second. And some, some websites will return the status 200 on 404 pages and Ahrefs Robot won't get it as a broken link, right? So if your 404 page is canonicalized to something else, then it's not going to show up in Ahrefs. Don't forget about your competition, right? You've got your own broken links, but your competitors might have broken links as well. If I was Lowe's, I'd go to Home Depot and I'd go to see all their broken links and try to steal every single one of them. So let's, um, oh, also don't forget about misspelled domain names, right? Home Depot, D-E-P-O dot com probably has some links, which um, we'll do a search for that right now. And there's a, there's a couple ways to look for this stuff. Um, let's go back here and let's do Home Depot. So uh, let's do homedepot.com, right? This would be the misspelled domain name. Minus site homedepot.com. Home Depot, the Home Depot. Wow, interesting. So this looks like it's another. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. So. This is an article from the Joy Bus. It 
some survey. Don't love this one. Um, but I'm going to log into Ahrefs. You get the idea with this one. So let's log in and look for homedepot.com. First, I'm going to do this, the misspelled domain name, homedepot.com. And I wonder if it's 301s right now. Let's check that first. It does 301. Okay, so this is a bad example, but you get the idea. One thing that I know for sure is Walmart with two M's. doesn't redirect to the home page, right? So anybody linking to wall, W-A-L-L, mart.com, probably a lot of them, um, they need to, Walmart needs to get those fixed. So 10 referring domains that Ahrefs found, great. Um, again, not the best example, but you get the idea here. So we're gonna go to broken, And we're going to see 12,000 broken links. Love it. So here's one for the corporate, some media page about, you know, their corporate office. Don't love that example, really. Here's one, 10 outdoor spring cleaning tips. Don't love that site. Um, Security breach, not going to hit anybody up about that, that's for sure. Market watch. Okay, here we go. So this is Cyber Monday deals from 2010. Love that. Um, Home Depot is probably broken. Good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for Cyber Monday Home Depot. And even though this is from 2010, we're still gonna hit up HuffPost and we're gonna say, um, hey, look, this page is old. It's probably getting traffic. Here's the updated URL. Boom, this is the right page. Still has 2018 on there, which is really interesting. They haven't updated it yet for next year, for this year, I guess. Um, cool. So that's the easy broken links, right? The next thing we want to look for are the soft 404s. So I don't really know off the top of my head what Home Depot's products look like when they go out of stock. Um, so that's really not going to help us there. But if you are a brand, you know what, what it looks like. So what you would do is you'd go back to your backlinks and you would search for UR, a specific URL string that happens when it is out of stock, right? Or a product that you know is going out of stock. And the trick here is we don't want to build more product links because products don't really generate a lot of organic search. We, what we want to say to them is we want to say, here's a link to the page where this product lives when it's in stock and give them the category page. It's an awesome way. And even we'll talk about this a bit more with link sculpting. Um, but usually to find soft 404s or like 301s that don't make sense that are technically, you know, 404s in Google's eyes, um, I just use this um, link type. And now first I'll use with redirect chain. And here you can look for, if you're like new to the brand or whatever, if there's like a bunch of 301s that have been put in place or old, art, or old articles or category pages that have been moved around, you can see how these links have gotten moved around according to how the Ahrefs bot found it. So let's wait for this to load.
All right, here's one on Google Cardboard. All right, this is sick because this is of Google's, literally Google itself, right? If we get a link on Google, that'd be awesome. Um, it looks like it's a ring magnet like this one, and it's 301ing a few different times. So I'm going to open this URL up and see what happens. So this one's good, right? It, it works. 301 makes sense. Nothing we could do there. Let's look at this one. So I don't know, because this is Google, I might even just give them the magnets category page and see if they link to it also, to be honest. Um, but anyways, let's move on. All right, love this. So this is exactly what I was talking about. So this is on Wistia, which is, I'm using Loom, and I think Wistia is a competitor of this. Shout out to Loom. Um, but they went to Home Depot, and they got extension cords, right? Which is out of stock, it looks like or they don't sell it anymore or whatever. That's great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit them up and I'm going to give them the extension cord category page. So now what I can do is this product, if this product has any more links, which maybe it does, I don't know. Um, anybody that's writing about extension cords, I can hit them up with this Home Depot URL. Um, and it looks like Home Depot one is ranking number one, which is cool. Um, or if I was Lowe's, I'd hit them up and be like, look, this is broken. You can get extension cords at our place. So pretty cool opportunity there. Technically a soft 404. So makes sense. We're going to talk a little bit more about this in the link sculpting. Um, but you need to know kind of how your site's laid out for this one to really be helpful. All right. Next tactic is link sculpting. Okay, this is very similar. Um, but there's a few additional ways we can look at it. So you want to look for links that are pointing to areas of the website that are either blocked by the robots or not adding value to the organic profile. Okay, if I got a bunch of product links on a product page that doesn't get any rankings, I want to get those switched because that link's not really helping me, right? It is kind of in like a domain authority play, but not from like my individual page authority. So a great example here is... Um, Let's use Home Depot since we're already there. What, what can I find? Let's find funny mailboxes. So what I'm looking at here is their search bar has slash S is their search functionality and then whatever your search is, right? So if I do a control U and I look for... the robots directive. So this content is no index, no followed. What that means is Google does not follow the links. If it comes, somebody's linking to this, it just turns around. It doesn't add it to the index, it doesn't follow what's on the page. So anybody linking to any type of search functionality, it's not adding value, right? So it's not a 404, but it's just not adding link value for organic search. That makes sense. 
Um, Google has said this is the case also. So this is a huge opportunity because I bet there's a ton of people that even like companies that like sell in Home Depot were like, I need to find my product and I need to put it on my website. And they just did the search functionality. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Ahrefs and we're going to search just for this search string, right? And we, oops, we got to get rid of the redirect chain. Slash S. Oh so it looks like slash P is for product, slash S is for search, and I bet slash C is for like category or, or brand or something. Um, but Let's see what this returns for us. So again, you want to look for soft 404s, and you also want to look for sucky 301s or canonicals. Technically, they're for soft 404s, I guess, but they're just a link that's not adding value. Um, love it. Okay. Expertise.com. Love this one. This is probably a sweet article. Workshop Hero. Love that. This is exactly what I was talking about. This looks like a company, right? Um, and they probably sell in Home Depot, and they just search for their own brand name and then made a logo there where you can find our stuff. It's got to be what happened there. Yeah, right here. So this link, not adding value at all. Safety guide for pet owners. This person at expertise.com was writing this article and was like, I need to find an example of dog steps, right? Buyer build some dog steps. Brutal, right? This is a sweet in content link on a really authoritative site. It's an expertise article about how to do something for your dog, right? Um, Home safety guide for pet owners was made for SEO. They probably know what's up here, so we have to be careful with the way we pitch them. But I'm going to do dog steps and see if Home Depot even has a page for it that's ranking. Um, I'm not sure if they do. Perfect. They do, actually. Love that. Let's loop below on page one. 18,000 a month searches. This is a good SERP for them to build around, right? So here's an easy opportunity for them to build a really good links here. Um, this is the new URL I'm going to pitch them. Okay, so um, going back to my prospect sheet here, um, I can do this one. Let's just do one for now. I'm going to do a new one here. DA was like, what, 49? Uh, I'm not going to go find an email address because I already showed you how to do that. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do like um, either broken. Sorry. I'm going to add another column for a broken URL or link type, right? So this is one that we will use to kind of organize our pitching when we get to it. So I'm going to say like dog steps. And then the new URL is obviously going to be this one that we just found. So now I'm going to see if there's any other mentions of dog steps, right? Are they linking to a specific product or whatever? And this is the page that uh, um, needs to be given. And it's, it's B is the um, so folder, which I don't know what that means. I'm sure the Home Depot people do. Um, cool. So that's a really good example of a pay a link that is technically adding value for the user, but not for the, the robot. Okay, we can also look for 301s that don't make sense. If it's like a product 301 into the homepage, that's not really helping. 
Um, so we can get that. I mean, there's a ton of these for Home Depot, roofvents.com. Um, so really easy. I'd probably start here because these are a really easy way to build category page links. Cool. Um, you can also check the robots file too and see what they're disallowing because that's not going to add value either. Um, so it looks like, yeah, their old search functionality here, which before they did the slash S, they're disavowing that. Um, and I'm pretty sure the search functionality is in there too. But like anybody that's linking to like um, the shopping or order process or like checkout, like, hey, this is what I got. And they're linking to their checkout page or whatever. Easy opportunity to, uh, to build links there. So love that. Let's keep moving on here. So same goes for um, any, most e-commerce have like some way to like filter out the search and they do that because they don't want all these search pages ranking, right? But they're losing link juice on them. Next one is link jacking. All right, this is one of my favorite ones. It's really easy here. Facebook, Twitter, and other articles about your website or your brand probably have rankings and links. Wikipedia, Home Depot's Wikipedia page, has 956 referring domains. Anybody that's linking to it, I'm gonna hit them up and be like, hey, can you link to our homepage instead? You can find more info here or whatever. Um, and you can use Ahrefs Content Explorer. You can also um, steal the links of your competitors, right? That's more broken link building slash link checking, but Mom Lowe's, all 13,000 of those broken Home Depot links, I'm gonna try and steal because it's not adding value to the user. And we'll get to more about that when we um, get to the pitch, but really good opportunity, especially if it's like an article about your company, like on Forbes or whatever, you know, you can just hit those people up there linking to that article and be like, Hey, I saw that you're linking to this Forbes article. Thanks so much. I wanted to give you this piece of information so you can have more value to your users. Can you link to us in addition or ask them to remove the link, right? Usually what works is asking them to include it as another resource for their users. That kind of works from what we found. All right, pitching and follow-ups. We're gonna go over a pitch here. Um, this is just one pitch, but it's, this is what you need for all your pitches. So they should have the following sections. An intro, okay? You need to explain quickly who you are and why you're qualified to email, all right? You need to ask them whatever it is you wanna ask. You need to clearly explain where you need a change to be made and you need to give them a new URL and suggested anchor text, okay? Um, this is really important because like, if you just say, hey, can you add a link to us, right? And don't tell them where or what you want the link to be, it's more work for them. So you need to give them all the information that you can. Um, so they don't have to think at all. They can just go in and copy and literally copy and paste. Um, I, I would stay away from saying you have to use this anchor text. Um, usually I say something like, I think it could look something like this and then give them like a, an example. And then sometimes they'll just copy and paste it. You need to have the value added, okay? People aren't gonna help you if they think it's just helping you, right? You need to explain why it's gonna add value to their users, okay? It's always about their users. Hey, your, this page is broken. People can get more information, like thanks for writing about us. People can get more information about us if you enter this link, right? It's all about their users. Um, you can test subject lines. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different ways you can get people to open your emails, obviously, but from an actual like conversion standpoint, these are the three main sections that you need. Um, and then the bonus, the bonus section, I call it is like a bonus value. If you're working with your social media team or something like that, um, you can be like, Hey, if you write about us, we'd be happy to, you know, shout you out on social or like anything you can do that's not like a link exchange that you can, you know, help them out. Um, people love being shouted out by brands on social media. So that works really well to help boost conversions there. Um, and then follow-ups, you should have varying styles of emails. So like follow-up one should be like, hey, I just wanted to follow up. Um, follow-up two should be like a mini ask, right? Where it's like, hey, I wanted to follow up on my suggestion of updating your, your page on this section and blah, 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 and having it just be like a shorter pitch. And then three, four, five, you can kind of um, test it out, right? Maybe start a new thread. Um, another really good one is asking who they should contact. 
and being like, hey, I'm not sure the right person to email, but if you could point me in the right direction, that would be great. And people love that because they go, oh, like just email Judy over there in, in marketing. Um, and they, they love to pass the buck. So I wouldn't do it right away. I'd do it after a few follow-ups. Um, and then people are usually like, stop emailing me. Here's the right person to contact. All right, so here's a pitch example. I'm gonna read it out loud. Um, so we, uh, we can send you pitch examples for all of the different tactics. Um, so my name is blank and I am blank. Okay, who you are, why you're qualified to ask. I usually would say stick with like an outreach community outreach person or community engagement specialist. If anything, if they hear like marketing or advertising, people usually want to ask for money. And obviously that's against Google's guidelines. Um, and usually like why you're reaching out to them, right? A good way to say it is, for most of these reclamation opportunities is like, I'm compiling a list of our brand mentions and came across your page, the exact page where you want to link, okay? Um, thanks for including a mention of us. I noticed, however, that the clickable URL in whatever section of the article is, is no longer working. If it's not too much trouble, I was hoping you could update um, the clickable mention into a working URL where this product can be found when in stock, okay? Um, this way, your users won't run into any issues. Again, it's about the users. A good URL you could use is category page. And then here's another like bonus ad. It's like, also, I noticed there are a couple of other um, mentions are no longer working, blah, 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 right? So you can do that. You could do, uh, if you're able to make this update, let us know and I'll pass it to my social media team, but some sort of like bonus update there. Thanks for your time and for this quick update. Have a great day. Um, the more personalized you can make it, sometimes I'll add like a PS, what it says like, PS, I loved your recent post on blah, 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 like really interesting, you know, thought there. But and anytime you make it more personable, people like to see handwritten emails. If they think you're a robot spamming them, they're not going to respond. And that's why the follow-ups work really well, because if you change your follow-ups a little bit and show um, that you are, you know, a human, people tend to respond to follow-ups more. So that's it. That is reclamation um, tactics for brands and enterprises. Um, you can set this campaign up pretty easily in-house. If you have any questions, if you want like a, a prospecting template or one of these pitch templates, just shoot us, shoot me an email and uh, we'll send it over. But thanks so much and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.